Welcome to the Chapter 8 lecture for um, the Musician's Guide to Theory and Analysis on Seventh Chords. In this chapter, we're going to learn how to spell and label seventh chords, um, and we're going to consider them in different musical contexts, and how triads and seventh chords are arpeggiated, and how to read them in transposing scores. So um, please listen to example 8.1, and this is the Bach Prelude in C major. Um, a lot of you will recognize this piece. This is a really popular piece of music, um, and it's a major, major, major piece in the Western classical world. Um, each measure consists, consists of one type of chord. And if you look at in example 8.1b, you'll see all the chords that are in um, the Bach Prelude in C major uh, notated in root position. So if you can, if you look at example eight one, you can see here that all the chords there are laid out here. So um, as you can see, uh, here are our triads that we've talked about in past, um, in our last chapter. And then you also see that there are others that are stacked with four notes, and we call those seventh chords. Hooray! Okay, so that means we have a triad, and then the distance between the um, root of the chord and the top note is a seventh. So, here we have all of our diatonic seventh chords that we consider in major keys. Um, so in this, uh, this little handy dandy guide here, it gives you your triad quality, seventh chord quality, or the seventh interval quality, its full name, what it's commonly known as, the abbreviation, which you'll need to know a lot about, and our Roman numerals. Okay, so our um, one chord is a major chord, we know that. Its seventh is a major. We call it the major, major seventh. And then it's another name is called the major seventh. And then it's also, here's its abbreviation. And if you were to write it as a Roman numeral, it looks like that. And this applies to every chord. So the two chord is a minor, minor seventh. Okay, actually, let me go back, sorry about this. So. You may be wondering, why is this called major, major? That means there's a major triad. So let's see if we can zoom here. Okay, a major triad right here. Okay, major triad. And then the seventh is a major seventh, not a minor seventh, okay? So each of these chords have its own triad and seventh label okay so um the two chord is a minor minor seventh the three chord is a minor minor seventh the four chord is a major major second and then here's our dominant chord our major minor seventh which is going to be super important coming up and then we have our minor minor seventh and then our um uh we have our um diminished chord here, okay, sorry, I'm trying to find a different color, the diminished chord, okay, this one is also called the half diminished chord, and this is super no important to know, so half diminished means, so if we look up here to our chord, the triad is diminished, and the seventh is minor, okay, Ooh, going crazy here. There we go. And then it's notated down here with the half diminished symbol. So again, you do that for half diminished. And then you see it here in the Roman numeral form. So um, I explained this already. So if, you t if we're thinking about um, the major seventh chord, we have a major triad with a major seventh. And that's built on the first and fourth scale degree. So those always, if you build the seventh over it, um, that's how you, um, you build it over the one chord and the four chord. 
All right, now in this one, we're going to be talking about the minor minor seventh, which means we have a minor triad and the minor seventh. So um, these are built on scale degrees two, three, and six. So the two chord is a minor seven, minor minor seven, the three is a minor minor seven, and the six is a minor minor seven. All right, the chord that's built on the five, the, fi the fifth scale degree, okay, this is called the dominant seven chord, okay, or the major minor seventh. This is very super, this is super important because this is the one that um, will help us later on in future chapters. So, so the major minor seventh is a major triad with a minor seventh on the top of it. And then... Um, we have here what we call our half diminished seventh chord, okay, which means we have a diminished triad with a minor seventh scale degree. And again, you notate it with that symbol. Um, if you look at example 8, 2, 8, and 3, the seventh chords are often labeled with Roman numerals to indicate scale degree placement and function in the key. We all know that. All right, so you're going to complete triad number one, um, and uh, you pause the video now, and then I'll go on and give you the answers. All right, so here's our first one. We're in the key of E. Sorry that it's fuzzy, but it'll um, give you all the answers you need. So we, this is the 4-7, so if we think about we're in the key of E, so C sharp is the sixth scale degree. So this is a minor minor seventh. So we have a six seven chord. And then we are in the key of E major. This is built on E. Okay, this is the one seven chord. Okay, and then this last one, the root is D sharp. Okay, which is our seventh scale degree. So this is our seven half diminished seven. Okay, let's go on to the next one. So the A flat, key of A flat, so we're in a major key still. So built on B flat, which is makes this the two seven. Okay. The next one here, built on the E flat, which is our five, seven. That's our dominant seven chord. This one's built on G. Okay, this is our half diminished seven chord. And then our last one built on D flat which is the fourth scale degree in A flat, so this is the major four, seven. Go down here, number three, key of B flat. Located on B flat, we have our one, seven chord. Here we have an E flat, that's the four, so we make that our four, seven. We have D here, which is scale degree three, and it's a minor, minor seventh, and then here we have F, which is our five seven chord in the key of B flat. And our last one, key of D, two sharps. Okay, this was on C sharp. So this is our seven half diminished seven chord. Okay, this one's built on B, which is our six, which is a six seven. Here's G, built on scale degree four. And then we have E, which is scale degree two. Seven. So that's try it number one. If you have any questions, make sure you see me as soon as you can. All right, now we're going to build our seventh chords here. So we're in the key of B flat. Okay, I know this is really fuzzy, but it'll get there. So our two chord is C. So let's build it up C, E flat, G, B flat. Okay, that's our two seven chord. All right, now we're gonna go in the key of D, our five chord, which is built on A, A, C sharp, E, G. So F is our four chord, built on B flat. B flat, D, F, A is our four chord. Okay, and then five E is built as our five seven chord. And that's built on B. So we have B, D sharp, F sharp, and then 
a, I'm just gonna put a line through that. And then we have our two chord, whoop, two chord in G, which is built on A, A, C, E, G. That's an easy one. And then we have E flat, asking for the seven, half to measure seven, so the seven scale degree of E flat is D, and we have F, A flat, and C. And then, oops, we went B major, one chord, obviously on B flat, so it would be D sharp, F sharp, and A sharp. Okay, then you were asked to label these with their correct um, names. So for example, right here, that's the major minor seven, okay? Two seven is a minor, minor seven, okay? Our five seven is our major minor seven, my favorite. Four seven is our major, major seven. Five seven, again, here's our major minor seven. Two seven is a minor, minor seven. E flat is our half diminished, okay? Half diminished seven. And then our last one is a major, major seven. Again, if you have any questions about this, make sure you see me. All right, seventh chords in inversions, okay? Just like triads, seventh chords can be written in, in an inversion as well as root position, okay? So example 8.4 gives you the figured base symbols in complete and abbreviated versions, okay? So just like we did in the last chapter, we look at all of our intervals, okay? So we have a three, five, seven, okay? And a lot of times we see it as just the seventh. Okay, now this is again root position. Okay, here's first inversion, okay? Where the third is in the base, okay? Let me, let me erase that really quick. So where the third is in the base, okay? So we have the three and the five and the six, okay? And then we don't need the three, so you'll see it a lot of times as six, five. Okay, now we have the second inversion, okay? Where we have the three, four, and six, we, we ignore the six, and so we get four, three. And now we have third inversion, okay? Where we have our two, a four, and a six, okay? And you'll see it mostly as a four, two, or two, so we get rid of the six. So if you see it a little bit stacked up, so we have here root position, G, B, D, F, okay, so we have seven, second inversion, third is in the base, B, D, F, G, so it's a six, five, second inversion, here's our four, three, okay, because the fifth is in the base, because the fifth of that G7 chord is D, and then our last one is when the seventh is in the base, so we call that a four, two, or third inversion, okay. So this is important stuff you really need to know. All right, you're going to complete try it number two. Okay. And on letter A, you're going to circle the correct sort of the seventh chord quality and then circle the work and figures that identify which chord member is in the base. In letter B, you will write the key signature, then the seventh chord in reposition and an inversion specified by the figures. Pause the video now, do try it number two, and then go on for the answers. All right, so we're looking at measure two. Okay, our quality out of the four, either major, 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 minor, 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 major, minor, seven, or half diminished. Okay, this is a minor, minor seven. Okay, so, and the seventh is in the base, okay? Measure three, so we have a major minor seven chord, okay? And we have a six five chord, okay? Which is our second, inver or first inversion, 
okay? And then measure six, we have another major minor seven, and this is in um, third inversion, okay? And so let's look at that, measure two, okay? So measure two, what are the notes we have here? So we have a D, F, A, C, okay? So that's if we were to stack them in thirds. And as you see here, the C is in the base. So that makes it, so our, um, that's, so the DFA chord is our two chord, right? Be our two chord, two seven, but you would write it as two, four, two, okay? All right, look at our measure three. So look at that, how would you stack that up? So we have G, B, D, and F. As you can see, the B is in the base, so that makes it a first inversion chord. So this is a five, six, five chord, okay? And then looking at measure six, So what kind of chord do we have here? So we have D, F sharp, A, and C. So D, F sharp, A, and C, okay? And we have C in the bass, so that makes it a third inversion chord. So this would be a five, four, two. Hooray! All right, for um, each of these below, you're going to write the inversion that it asks for, okay? So first up, let me change my color of pencil here. Okay, so we have the key of D flat, okay? The two chord is based on here, okay? So let's write our key signature, a B flat, and then maybe a G flat, okay? Maybe boom, boom, boom. Boom, okay, boom, two, seven. Let's write it in first inversion. So we need the third in the base, which is G. So G, B, D, and E, okay? So that's our two, six, five chord. It's going on to A, which is our major key. So we need a F sharp, C sharp, G sharp. So one, seven, B, A, C sharp, E, G, boom, easy peasy. And we have a third inversion. So our seventh is in the base. So we have a G, A, C, E. Okay. Remember we're in the bass clef here. Okay, so our four, seven chord. So we need a flat. So it's in B flat, D, F, A. Okay, first inversion. So we have D, F, A, B flat. Okay. We have our seven, half diminished seven. Okay, so A flat would be four flats. B, E, A, E, okay. And then we need a chord, G, B flat, D flat, F. Okay, so that's our half diminished seven. Okay, that's our activation. Now we have to make it first inversion. Okay, so our third is in the base. So we need B, D, F, A, and G. Okay. And our last one, our E flat chord, asking for five seven. So we need B flat, E flat, A flat. Okay, five seven is um, B flat, D, F, A flat. Okay, now in um, second inversion, five, four, three. So that means our fifth needs to be in the base. So we can draw it down here, F, A, B flat, D. It's that easy, folks. If you know your key signatures, boom, 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 get her done, okay? All right, now talking about our minor chords, okay? Very similar to major keys. Our one chord is minor, minor. Two chord is half diminished, okay? Minor seven, half diminished. 
our three chord is major major, four chord is minor minor, okay, and again, we're talking about harmonic minor, which has our raised seventh scale degree, okay, which makes our five chord a the major minor seventh chord, okay, our flat six chord is a major seven chord, and then in minor keys, our diminished chord is fully diminished, okay? And we notate a fully diminished chord with just the circle. Okay, so seven, fully diminished seven, okay? Versus what we saw in the other chapter, half diminished, okay? So again, two chord is half diminished, seven chord is fully diminished. All right, you're gonna complete triad number three, okay? So you're gonna spell each of the seven chords in the given minor key, including the leading tone, okay? And it's gonna be five and seven, okay? Write the key signature, okay? And then write the type above the step. So pause the video, complete that, and then go on for the answers. So here we go. Gave us our first one, which is our four, minor four seven chord, which is a minor minor seven chord. Okay. So uh, all right. So here we go. We have our two seven chord, which is half diminished. Okay. So we need a D sharp. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. D sharp. We need D sharp, F sharp, A, and C sharp, okay? So in A, our five chord is E, okay? So we need E, G sharp, B, and D, okay? F minor, four flats, F minor, four flats, which is F, A flat, C, E flat, okay. Oops, sorry. So we have C minor, which I fully diminished seven, okay. So which is a B natural, okay, which is in D, F, A flat, okay. We have our F sharp minor, okay, which our alternate key is A, so the three sharps. We need the two chord, so we need G sharp, sorry, G sharp, B, D, and F sharp, okay. Key of G, our fully diminished seven starts on F sharp, A, C, E flat, because that's in our key signature, and then we have our E minor chord, because we're in the key of E, is one sharp but E G B D okay so if we think back to our so this is our half dim chord okay major minor seven okay our one seven is a minor minor seven this is fully diminished seven okay half diminished seven again fully diminished seven and then we have our minor, minor seven again, okay? So if you have any questions about that, make sure you really come see me. Oops. All right, so spelling seventh chords. Hooray, hooray, hooray. To spell seventh chords above a given root, first spell the correct quality triad, then add the proper seventh. For example, <clears throat> write a seventh chord above F, okay? So uh, a minor seventh chord, okay? So that means we would need a minor F A flat C triad, okay? And then adding the seven. Okay, so we have a minor seventh above that, which would be E. Oops, E, okay? And then check the interval quality you need a minor seventh so f to e is a major seventh so you need to change that and be e flat here's another way of thinking about spelling seventh chords 
okay? So like we just did, we had our F minor chord, and then it asked for a minor seventh. You got that. And if you need to, you can think back to the inversions of triad. So major seventh is a minor second. A minor seventh is a major second. Diminished seventh. Okay. So a diminished chord or a fully diminished chord. So the triad is what makes it diminished. Okay. So if it's a half diminished, it's a diminished triad with a minor seventh on it. Okay or a fully diminishes diminished triad, fully diminished seventh, okay? And you can see that here. Or you can think about fully diminished chords as a bunch of minor thirds stacked on top of each other, okay? All right, so that's that. You can, or you can think of it this way as well. So this is another way of doing it, okay? If you can also think of the chords, this is how I think of it, okay? So major minor seventh, or major major seventh, a major triad with a major third, major minor seventh, which is a major triad with a minor third, major, minor minor seventh, a minor triad, and a minor third on top, seventh, diminished triad, major third, fully diminished, diminished triad, minor third. All right, let's complete triad number four. So you're going to spell the seven chords from the roots that are provided. Again, these are the roots, not um, in any inversions. So pause the video, complete the triad, and then go on for the answers. All right, let's rock and roll on building the seven chords. So we're in the bass clef, so we need a minor minor seventh based on C. So let's build... Oops, I need a pen. Oh man. So I need C, A, B flat. Okay, so E flat, D flat, easy peasy. So we got a minor triad, minor seventh. All right, let's do our half to minor seven built on an F. So we have F, A, C. So I need F, A flat, and then C flat, and then. <clears throat> minor 7, which would be B flat. So fully diminished 7 built on B. A, A. So we need a diminished triad and a 7th. Okay, so to make this a diminished triad, we need nothing to change because that's a diminished triad as it is, and then a diminished 7th. Major 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 seventh f a c which is our major chord and a major seventh which is an e all right a fully diminished or half diminished seven built on g sharp so we need a diminished chord so so we have g sharp b which is a minor triad or minor third and then another minor third and then a minor seventh built on seventh Okay, which is F sharp. Okay, moving down here, major minor seven, built on E, E, G sharp, B, D. Okay, uh, fully diminished seven, so we have C sharp, C sharp, E, G, and B flat, which are fully diminished. Minor minor seventh, which is an F sharp minor chord, F sharp, C sharp, and then we have an E. Good. Oops, we need a half diminished seven built on D, so diminished triad, D, F, A flat, and a minor seventh, which is F. Major minor seven, so we have a major chord, E flat, G, B flat, with a minor seventh. Oops. A minor seventh, which is D flat. And our last one, major major seven, built on G. So we have a major chord, G B D, and a major seventh, which is F sharp. So if you have any questions about this, please see me as soon as possible. Minor seventh, oops. 
So, seventh chords in popular styles. So if you play studio rock or jazz band, you may have familiar with another labeling seventh chords. You see this system in lead sheets and maybe combined with guitar fretboard diagrams. So here you see the fretboard diagrams along with the seventh chord symbols there. So she said minor, B minor seven, D major seven, F sharp minor one, C sharp, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. Oops. So if we are talking in the C major scale, so we're talking like this is like our one seven chord. But we call this C major seven. So you see I as like I, I play with pop chord symbols all the time. I see this one a lot. I also see um, this one a lot. You don't really see the triangle very often, but know that that means a major seven. And that's how you see the minor seven chords. And again, exactly like that. G seven. You see there's no major or minor in front of it. That's assumed that it's the major minor seven chord. Okay. And then we have our A minor seventh. And then here's our half diminished chord. Okay. Um, you see it both ways. And that's basically what it comes down to. All right. Let's talk about our C minor scale. Okay. So C minor seven, half diminished. Okay. And then... Here, we're talking about our diminished chord, fully diminished. So that's what you see a lot is the B dim seven. So that's a fully diminished chord. And again, here we have our major minor seventh chord, just going G seven, okay? Um, so in example 8.2 and 8.5, they don't exhaust all the possible combinations of triads and sevenths because we're talking about just common practice seventh chords. Um, for example, you could write an augmented triad with a major or minor seventh or a minor triad with a major seventh. This adds cool colors to jazz and pop music. If you listen to 8.9, the measure 8, the B-flat 7 chord is a dominant seventh, while the C7 um, augmented fifth or raised fifth in measure 10 is an augmented triad with a minor seventh. So this is um, stuff you see, but we don't really call it anything in our... Um, world of common practice seventh chord. All right, complete the triad five, write in the seventh chords that are requested, write in the accidentals instead of the key signatures. Okay, when finished, you can go on for the answers. All right, let's create some seven chords. So we have our D seven chord, which is our major minor seven chord. So D, F sharp, A, and C. Okay, that one's pretty easy. So, uh, next one we have our G sharp minor seventh. Okay, so we need to build that off of G sharp. So, G sharp. So, G sharp chord, G sharp minor chord, G sharp B, D sharp. Okay, and then our minor seventh, which is an F sharp. Okay, oops, E major seven. Okay. Building that off of E, of E, G, B, and D, but we need to add the correct sharps. So we have an E major chord and a major seventh. So we have a B major seven sharp five, okay? So uh, B flat, sorry, B flat major. So B flat, B flat, D, F, okay? And a major seven, which is A, okay? But we have to do the sharp five, okay? Just one of those cool color chord. Here's B major seven, okay? So we have B, D, F, A. But we need the correct accidentals: B, D sharp, F sharp, and A sharp, okay? So we have C minor seven flat five. So we need a C minor chord C. E flat G and B flat, but we have a flat five. Okay, what is this? It is our half diminished chord, right? Okay, F sharp minor seven. So we need F sharp minor, F sharp, A sharp, C sharp, and then a minor seventh, which is E. So 
f sharp f7 okay so we have f7 f a c e flat we like to raise the fifth so sharp that right there and our last one is a flat seven with a sharp five so we have an a flat chord a flat c e flat oops e flat okay and then our seventh minor seventh which is that flat okay but sharp five we'd have to get rid of that flat okay so that is the correct chord so when you listen to Fall in Love before, all the members of each chord sounded at the same time. But sometimes a chord may be arpeggiated, which means you play one pitch of the chord at a time, just like that Bach prelude that we listened to in the beginning. Um, if you look at example 8.10, in the, in the bass clef of the Mozart aria uh, Voice Sapete, it arpeggiates the chords in B flat. This was done to imitate the guitar, because the guitar on stage, or the character on stage is playing guitar. So here is that example. So if you see here in the bass clef, it's arpeggiating B flat there. Okay. So this is a B flat chord, okay, or a one chord. Okay. See here it's arpeggiating an F chord, but it's in first inversion. Okay. So we have a 5-6, okay, technically a 5-6-5 five, five because it's a 7th, okay, and then here we're back to B-flat, okay, and then we have a 5 chord again, so as you can see it's arpeggiating the B-flat chord, the F chord, the B-flat chord, okay, and the F chord. And you can arpeggiate the chords all the time, and this is this is what um, the uh, the Mozart inversions in the last one are. So the, this is the built triads that were in that last one. And then the, uh, another way of arpeggiation is something we call Alberti bass. Over here, if you see this, it says Alberti bass. Okay, so this means. Um, the uh, triad is arpeggiated in a low up down up contour so if you see here low up down up so it's arpeggiating the one chord in c which is c e g but bum 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 okay something you've heard a lot of times in a lot of music okay make sure you listen to that example all right, transposing score. This is our fun part. This is the a nice to know part of this chapter. Okay, so um, you can use the score to identify the triads and seventh chords in a fuller musical context. So we are in the key of D, but look at here. There's no key signature in the horn section. So we're going to talk about that. So. It, you can see it shows the notes um, the instrument plays then the sounding pitches so like the horn score was written in the key of C not the key of D like the rest of it okay we call this a transposed score here okay transposed score and you'll know a transposed score by um, the key signatures because not all the key signatures are the same okay sometimes if you look like a, at a band or orchestra score It'll show the sounding pitches, okay, and you call that a C score. But a lot of times you see the transpose score, okay, because they try to list everything the way you would see it. So for many instruments called C instruments or um, concert pitch instruments, the pitch you see notated is the pitch you hear. These include the piano, flute, bassoon, trombone, etc., etc., and the string family. Um, then also something interesting is that some sound uh, an octave above or below their notation, like the piccolo and the xylophone. They sound an octave higher. Okay, guitar, string, bass, and contrabassoon sound an octave lower. Okay, but when you see 
but for wind and brass instruments, we call these transposing instruments. So the pitch you see notated is the pitch you hear. Popular transposing instruments, um, they sound a whole step lower than the, so the B-flat trumpet, B-flat clarinet, tenor saxophone, okay? Assigning specific pitches, chords, or melody to particular instruments is called arranging, which we will be doing as a project at the end of the year, or larger ensembles that are called orchestration. So orchestration is arranging for uh, a bigger number of people. So these are the key concepts to transposing instruments. Okay, B flat instruments. Okay, the notated key is a whole step above the concert pitch key. Okay, to write for a B flat instrument, transpose the concert part up a whole step. So let's say we the, we were in um, concert C, so we would have to write in D. Okay, remember the concert pitches sound a whole step lower than the notation. Okay. The B flat tenor section and B flat are written in the treble clef, but sound in the bass clef. So you're going to transpose up a whole step plus an octave or a major ninth. E flat instruments, the, the notated key is a minor third below the concert pitch key. Okay, So right for an E flat clarinet, transpose the concert part down a minor third. So if we were in the key of E flat, you would write in C. Okay. F instruments uh, is the notated key is a perfect fifth above the concert pitch key to write for F horn or English horn transpose the concert part up a perfect fifth concert pitches sound a perfect fifth lower in than the notation. And then A instruments the notated key is a, a minor third above the concert key pitch to write for an A clarinet which is very rare transpose the concert part up a minor third concert pitches sound a minor th third lower than the notation uh, try it six and try it seven you're going to analyze the chords for the Haydn piece try it number seven write in write the key of the transpose part for each instrument okay so uh, the correct answers for this you should have had a um, for this one should have been seven half diminished seven one one six two fully diminished six and one okay so that's what you should have done for that okay and then let's talk about the transposing instrument so concert key e flat Instrument type B flat instrument or F. Okay, write that there. So this is G, G, B flat, okay, C, D, B flat, and A. So um, you would, you would, so B flat instrument, you write a whole step up. Concert key is C, F instrument, you write a perfect fifth up. E flat instrument, you write a minor third down. Okay, we have an A instrument. Concert key of G, you write up a, um, a minor third. Okay, so we have an F instrument in the key of F. You write a fourth, which is, sorry, fifth, which is C. Concert key of C, we have a B flat instrument. Okay, so you write up a whole step, which is D. We have an E flat, which is an F instrument. Okay, you write up a fifth, which is B flat. Concert key, concert key of C, E flat instrument. You write down a minor third, which is A. Um, the treatment of seventh chords is really super important in terms of musical style. Only sevenths built on the scale degree two, five, and seven appear throughout the classical period. That's really important. Okay, you won't really see a 1-7 or a 6-7. Those are things you'll see in jazz and whatnot, but you really don't see them in the classical period. Okay, Yet, seven chords on all scale degrees exist in romantic music, jazz, and popular styles. For example, in common practice, songs would not end on a 1-7 or a minor 1-7, which happens frequently in jazz and modern music.
the music. Hooray! Make sure you read the Did You Know at the end of Chapter 8. It gives you an insight about Alvarez Bass. You never know, I might ask that as a extra credit question on um, your chapter assessment. And as always, if you have any questions, please see me. Make sure you complete the triads. Okay, in the next chapter, we're going to actually be, like, besides writing chords, we're going to be writing melodies. Have a great day.